Hey, Ben. Um, good job on the excerpt so far. Um, I mean that. Taking a look at the Mozart here, I've indicated you're rushing uh, there in line three. Um, if these had a bit more shape, I think that it might help give it some poise. Um, just simply, you know, rising and falling with the scale degree. Uh, there, at the next little box I made, um, it's just a bit sluggish. It's sort of the opposite problem. Um, it just needs to have a, a bit more zest and uh, and playful nature. Um, there's something sort of caught in your arm there, so take a look at that. Okay, moving on to the next excerpt here. It's just a bit too aggressive, in my opinion, for a middle Mozart movement. It's very clear, so please don't lose that, um, although the beginnings of the notes uh, are just a bit dirty in the bow. Uh, take care to be elegant uh, with this, even though it's forte. The gestures there that lead down to the next measure, second measure, and, and so on, uh, are, again, beginning too aggressive in the pickup notes. And so I can't tell that you're leading down to the downbeat. So it needs to have that kind of yum feeling. And I think that means not punctuating the beginning of those uh, pickup gestures very much, and also maybe playing them a bit faster. Between the two sections of this excerpt, I believe you should take the same tempo. Um, so take you know into account while you're ending the first part of the excerpt uh, what your tempo is and start the next part accordingly. Um, the grace notes there are a bit too slow, uh, and also I'm not sure if you're just deciding not to do this bowing there, but uh, it looks to me like the grace notes are slurred into the first sixteenth note. Um, I recommend that, and either way, what you're doing uh, is causing a bit of a hiccup right before the first sixteenth note, and uh, either way, uh, take care to make that sound like one gesture, those four notes, and not three. Uh, and lastly, just make sure you have poise at the end of the excerpt there. Um, the way you end an excerpt is incredibly important to the people listening, and do make sure you're not in a hurry to, to get to the end there. Um, it was a bit hurried, in my opinion, uh, in the video you sent me. In the Beethoven here, uh, the beginning note uh, is part of the phrase before, of course, uh, which you're doing. Just make sure the gesture is big enough. Bum, puppy, bum, bum you know, um, a little bit bigger and just put some stage makeup on there so that everyone knows, you know, the symphony. Um, let me see. Yeah, you need a bit more metronome work in this one. Um, the crescendo in the first line is not uh, incredibly evident. Uh, in the third line there, there's just something wrong with your, your arm. It's not on the right plane or something, but there's, there's uh, a disconnect between the shoulder and, and the wrist. If you review your video, you'll see it, I think. Um, I think from my standpoint, having not seen you play it more than one time, that your arm needs to be more on one plane as opposed to three different axes. Uh, it, it just seems like there's too much work going on. Uh, you're rushing that big box there. Um, the fortissimo there below it that I didn't uh, circle or anything, it needs to be quite evident in Beethoven. So right there, you need to really punch out the end of that line. Um, make sure you end it with elegance, however. Uh, the next part, it needs to be much more delicate, and it's about half that volume that you played in the video. Um, so, you know, really quiet and chirp-like, you know, like bird-like. Uh, see at the end there? Oh, right. You you tapered it, which is great. Just make sure that it has some purpose as it goes down to the, to the bottom. Again, the end of the excerpt is very important. In the scherzo, I believe you did start from the string. Um, just make sure you practice uh, and make sure you really feel what that feels like. That may have been the problem with the first take you took uh, and why you had to start over. A sense of balance really needs to be felt here at the beginning of this because it needs to sound easier. It needs to sound less laborious. Um, it, it needs to have a big long line and a very subtle long line that moves by very quickly. So um, again, maybe a little more metronome work might, might be what you need. These Fort Sandy here, um, they need to be led to more uh, by the measure before. So you know, and I I think they can be tiered as well three times uh, respectively. 
Moving on to Don Juan. Um, in that second line there, it's rushing a bit. Uh, it not only needs to not be rushing, but it has to have a sense of uh, poise and power there. Okay, the half notes thereafter aren't long enough, and again, it's it's causing the heroic quality of this uh, character to sound a bit fleeting, which is not what Don Juan's about. Uh, when you're doing these sextuplets there, you know, the flutes, I believe, have the important line. So when you come in with your pickup there, the sol, mi, um, the dynamics need to be very clear. So it, it's evident that violins are bursting onto the scene after playing accompaniment. And uh, the pickup needs to be much more important. So... Uh, moving on, the triplet gestures there need to be much more fun and much more... Uh, uh, three-dimensional those those hairpins at the end are a very important part of that um, even though you're doing them now it's it's just not uh, the kind of stage makeup that, that an audition requires the accents there uh, that I boxed are aren't really evident I'm not sure if I even hear them quite as accents myself but I do know that those two measures moving on to the next line and one two three measures there need to all be part of the same gesture and right now it's broken up a bit so do whatever you have to do to make that the biggest point thus far in the excerpt. Um, in this little relaxed section here, you know, it's it, it's just got a little bit of the elements of what's happening after and what happened before. It needs to be totally separate, and the fortissimo after that needs to be a giant surprise. Um, in the romantic music there, uh, the, the line after B, um, just make sure you don't lose the romantic uh, nature of the music as you're diminuendoing. It just sort of not only lost that, but rushed a bit. In the Mendelssohn Scherzo, uh, those accents uh, are meant to give, I think, a feeling of a larger sense of rhythmic organization. So looking at A, you know, um, the crescendo needs to be also uh, a little bit clearer. Mm, okay, the famous excerpt there at C, those accents need to be a bit different. They need to be jarring. Um, so, fatter and warmer. Um, let them be fat, but don't let the momentum of the fatness affect the pickup that's coming up. So. It's almost as though when you play that those quarter notes, they'll seem like they're going to last longer, and all of a sudden we're interrupted, you know, um, by the third beat. So, boom, you know, boom, you know, more dance like. Um, so that's your last note there. It was just a bit long. It's just a little bit of housekeeping. In the Scheherazade, you know, it this is hard. Uh, it really does need to tell a story. Um, I'm sure you know about the. The basis, you know, behind the symphony is, is that, that this woman is telling stories to the king or prince or whatever, and her life is on the line, I believe. And she's um, she's reading from the Arabian Nights, and every single word and phrase, therefore, of this solo has to be mellifluous. You know, it has to be beautiful. The ends of each note, for instance, in all of the cadenzas, the first note. It doesn't ever finish quite right. Um, I recommend that slur there at the end. I think you separated it. It's tough to give advice um, on these cadenzas in a way because all I'm used to are uh, recordings I've heard, but I do think that this particular cadenza there, the last gesture, which is of course very hard, needs to have a, a, a more of a sense of trajectory um, from what you did. Um, it also seems very clear that it's hard. Um, the staccatos, you know, which aren't that short, uh, there's again something wrong in the arm. I think when you're going down to the string, uh, below 
your wrist or arm or elbow is doing something that's the opposite that would be used for, for, for like moving up to the next string. Um, it's hard to sing, but uh, something that is one distinct geometric figure as opposed to too many. I think in order to really help you with these cadenzas, I'd have to hear you play them back to back in different ways to really uh, experiment with the pageantry of uh, the solo. Um, this girl singing and, and, and changing the inflections in her voice and such. But I do know that there before the you have to really wait before the that theme comes in. Uh, nobody's rushing you there at all. Um, I know people do these last pickup notes differently um, between each other, but. I've never heard anybody do two different pickup notes, you know, in the same performance of these two little sections. So the first one, I think you did them very fast and did not break the, the chords. And the second one you did, perhaps because you think you have to, uh, obviously there's, there's an extra note there. Um, I'm pretty sure it would sound better to, to perform them the same. I particularly like the broken chords, I think, and you pulled off that last one very well in your video. I really liked the aesthetic values of how you ended that. I didn't have too much to say about the Tchaikovsky. Um, these accents need to be led to, just like in the Mozart a bit. You know, just like in the recording. Um, the dynamics need to be a bit more noticeable there uh, at B. The fact that you're moving from forte to mezzo forte seems to me like one of those things that's going to be circled. This next theme needs to never rush. It needs to be beautiful and um, as poised as the rest of the movement. Remember, this is a march, right? So, bim bum ba dim bum 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 bira yum bum dira yum bum but always in the back of the beat. Dira dira yum ba dira. Bam! Boom! And the accents need to be elegant, like I said there, a different kind of attack than what you've got going on now. But overall, this excerpt just is lacking a little bit of that gallant feel that, that uh, Tchaikovsky has, especially when he's composing little miniature music like this. They're not supposed to be all that important. Um, you've got kind of a serious it can work. I think that uh, it, it needs a little bit more elegance. I think that's what you want to bring to the table with this excerpt. And finally, just please don't be in a hurry to finish the movement. It's the last thing you want to show the committee, um, but also this elegant, graceful, lilting uh, march type feeling is um, not clear and goes against the nature of the, the character of the march. It um, needs to swing in groups of four. Yum, yum, yum. With style and elegance. I hope that helps some, uh, and keep up the good work. It sounds good. I look forward to hearing more.